Welcome to the African International Mediation Week. Today is on the second day of December in the year 2020. And this is the third day of the African International Mediation Week, which is running from 1st of December to the 4th of December in the virtual sessions. Our session today is with the San Francisco Bar Association, the Conflict Intervention Service Team, and it is focused on being able to develop your mediation practice, to develop the business model, marketing it, and the strategy. Welcome to the session. My name is Wangari Kabiru. God bless you. The anthem and then... Okay, the meeting is okay. being recorded. Thank Wonderful. you. Thanks for the reminder, Wangari, I appreciate it. Welcome. Um, Ismail will kick off with the national anthem and then I'll, I'll, I'll pass on to you. Then you can be able to invite Roger and the other colleagues to introduce themselves kindly. Excellent. Uh, can we make a request, Wangari? Uh, yes, please. Is it possible that you would do the anthem in your own language? Yes, it's in Kiswahili. We are doing it Wonderful. in Kiswahili. Yes, yes. Thank you we so much. Our, yes, we do want them in Kiswahili. And uh, today to close, we will have the American anthem. So kindly, uh, our uh, facilitating team, uh, we invite you to lead us in the closing anthem for today. But the starting anthem will be from Kenya. And uh, it's we call it, it is the uh, Wimbo Wataifa, which is the anthem. So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Wangari Kabiru and I invite you to the African International Mediation Week and Strategy Conference. Today is the second day of December in the year 2020 and it is the third day of the African International Mediation Week. So welcome, please feel at home. Today we have our evening session at 8 p.m. East Africa time. Our session is hosted uh, by, uh, with the uh, San Francisco Bar Association and specifically the conflict intervention uh, conflict intervention uh, team and uh, uh, Ishmael who is leading uh, this particular session will be able to introduce the team. Our session today is to enable mediators to be able to understand how to develop their uh, practice as a business to develop their business model, their strategy and marketing. And we have a very special guest whom, who will be unveiled by our uh, team from the CSI and we are really really delighted that they did bring along a gift because we love gifts. So we'll kick off with the national anthem in uh, Kiswahili. So Wimbo wa Taifa. E mungu ngugu yetu ilete baraka kwetu. Haki iwe ngao na mlinzi na tukae na undugu. Amani na uhuku, raha tupate na ustawi. And may God bless and God bless all of us. And at this juncture, I take the opportunity to invite uh, Ishmael, who will then introduce uh, the rest of the team and also lead us through the session. Ishmael, karibu sana. Karibu sana means you're most welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for the introduction. We appreciate it. We are delighted to be with you and we we'll look uh, forward also to one more session with you on uh, Saturday, December 5th, to where we actually get to introduce CIS to you. And uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, my name is Eshma Rahimi and I'm a consultant with the Conflict Intervention Service CIS of the Bar Association of San Francisco. I'm joined by my colleagues today and I'll ask them to say a few words about themselves. And afterward, if you'd like any of you who would like to introduce yourself, uh, please do uh, in whichever format you wish to do that. Uh, so we started with our uh, senior um, mediation counsel, uh, Roger Moss. And Roger, if you just wanted to say a few words, that would be wonderful. Well, thank you, Ishmael. And thank you again, Wangari, and all of you for being here. Um, I've been sitting here thinking, um, about the power of interdependence and, and global connections, um, which is something those ideas are really sacred to me and, and to take it one step further. Um, you know, I, I have come to understand from the standpoint of science that uh, the, at the atomic level, the material and the distant stars I see in the sky are made of the same things uh, same materials that make up my DNA. We are we really all come from the same place and are headed to the same place in a very real way, way the science says that. And I think they're just catching up 
with all the great spiritualists through our collective histories. Um, and I say those things because it's very, uh, these are very powerful things for me to remember, but they connect directly to the practical uh, work that I do. And I do need to work for a living to pay my bills and put food on the table. And after a long career in business in real estate, um, a, uh, Seven or eight years ago, I, I took that experience and did something different with it. My career was no longer working for me on a personal level. It had changed a lot. Um, other people suggested I should become a mediator because I've been doing that. There was a thread of collaborative negotiation throughout my work. Uh, so I started studying or in, and learning about the huge world of all the different kinds of things that connect to the world of mediation. And I just fell in love with all of it and all of you, because it's just a beautiful thing. And it really, it was like, boy, this is what I've been missing my whole life. Um, and, but because I needed to make a living and I started this, uh, I was pushing 60 by the time I, I started this work. Um, and I met all kinds of people who were successful at it. And then I was looking at all through the eyes of my business background, which included a lot of marketing. And so, um, uh, there are kind of three themes for me, some of which I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to try to ask some questions, lay out some big ideas, and then turn it back over to Ishmael and everyone else that we can be thinking about. So, so the first question is, um, so I'm a, I, I'm a mediator, I mediate, I do other things. The question is, is calling my, is calling myself a mediator the best thing in order to connect with people who need help with conflict. And, and this idea came from a mentor of mine that most of you, if not all of you have heard of, Colin Rule, who's the, the leading light of online dispute resolution. When he challenged me at a lunch several years ago and said, he said this, it will make you uncomfortable and that's okay, that's the point. He said, Roger, whatever you do, don't call yourself a mediator. And I looked at him and I said, what do you mean? He said, because most consumers have a terrible experience with mediation. Now that statement comes from the traditional way it's practiced in North America, where you have retired judges pushing people together in a room uh, and kind of forcing them to a conclusion. It's highly pressurized. It's very short on compassion. Um, but I have talked to a lot of people consumers who they get a very uncomfortable feeling in their in their stomach when they hear, hear the word mediation, just like they do when they hear about going to court or litigating or fighting. People don't react well to the word conflict. So being conscious of that and how I, and the kind of messaging I do to the people I want to do business with uh, has been something I've been working on for years and there's no perfect solution but I, I've been working on it for a long time. The second idea is that traditional top of mind uh, marketing really doesn't work uh, for what we do. Just as people don't walk around thinking of the name of a dentist in case they get a toothache, they don't wanna think about conflict. So that many, many mediators have spent tons of money trying to promote themselves in conventional ways that work for other services. They're not terribly effective uh, for what we do. And the good news is though, old fashioned relationship building and showing up to talk about what we do and showing up to help people does work. And we'll be hearing about that a lot today. And then the last idea that's very important to me, I've come to believe um, uh, that teams coming together as groups is the most powerful way to deliver value to the community and also meet my own needs to pay my bills. And teams that are interdisciplinary, teams that have people with different styles, different subject matter expertise, um, coming together in those teams and then seeking to help people and get work in that fashion, I think is the best way to go. And, and I'll end with this, you know, all things being connected. Uh, I know you had a great presentation yesterday from our friends in Canada who connected us with you. Uh, 
And five years ago next month, I met Darcia Tudor, who is, has been able to be with us today. And she, she presented on marketing for mediators. And the tagline for that presentation that got my attention was, don't spend a dime until you come hear my presentation. And I saw that on LinkedIn. So using social media as a gateway to connect with people is something I do more than marketing my services. Um, and I'm just, I'm just so tickled, Garcia. Thank you for being here and for all of you. And so I'm gonna stop there. That was a lot of information. Um, and Ishmael, why don't you pick up or pass the, pass the ball, whatever metaphor you'd like to use. Thank you so much, Roger. Uh, we'll go to our colleague, uh, Tanya Segili. Good evening and good morning to my colleagues that are on this side. Uh, my name is Tanya Sahili, and I am an associate mediation counsel for the Bar Association of San Francisco. And I have um, had a mediation practice for about 10 years um, and then transitioned working with Roger and the rest of the team um, full time in January of 2020. So I'm very happy to be here. I am a silent participant um, today, although I may add some input um, where is needed. And then I'll see you all on Saturday as I present about the CIS process um, in its entirety. So thanks for having me, happy to be here again. Thank you so much, Tonya. And of course our gift to you today is Darcia. Uh, our colleagues from Pacific Northwest. So we'll pass it to you, Darcia. Well, I'm flattered, a gift. <laughs> well, I'm excited to be with you guys this morning. My, my niece lives in, is living outside of Nairobi right now doing some work for a um, governmental program out there. And I'm getting ready to visit sometime, hopefully next year. So uh, warm greetings to all of you. Um, I started in mediation in a more traditional way. I became an attorney first. And when I started law school uh, decades ago, alternative dispute resolution didn't even exist. People had litigation model or cave. That was basically it. And I was a trial attorney for about 25 years. And what I loved about, I loved the preparation work. I loved uh, the interaction in court. What I hated was the results for my client. Nine times out of 10, whether it was a business client or a real estate client or a family client, they were not satisfied with the result because the expense was so great to them. And it wasn't just the expense and money, it's the anxiety and the worry and the time they had to put into the litigation process that they felt overwhelmed by. <clears throat> and frequently they were unhappy. So even when we won, we lost. And I just thought there had to be a better way. Well, about in the 90s, people started talking about mediation, alternative dispute resolution, and a lot of protocols started to come into place. But for me, I also wanted to pivot to understanding the dynamics of conflict and what causes conflicts, because I was really focusing on families at that time and family practice at that time, as well as personal injury. And what underlying emotional uh, aspects of conflict either caused impasse or prevented people from resolving their dispute. So I went back and got a master's in clinical psychology and focused on resiliency in children after trauma and first traumatic events are usually divorce and also the dynamics of conflict. And that opened up a whole new world to me because usually the conflict is not about the position. I want this. I don't want that. It's what's underneath this. Rep it's what it represents to you. You know, I want safety or I want security or I want happiness or you're calling me a liar. It's the underlying emotions that feed the conflict. And once you can pause and kind of understand what need or interest that person is not being met, you can speak to the emotional underlying interests and needs to move people from impasse. And that just opened up a whole new world for me and made it really fun. So as my practice in Washington state, the traditional way you became a mediator, I decided that's how I wanted to use these tools was to <clears throat> be seen as, a, as an expert attorney in your field. And then as uh, Roger pointed out, do these ex parte, these uh, settlement conferences, what's what they call them, where basically they keep you in prison for eight hours, eight to 10 hours in a room by yourself, um, talking to attorneys. And by the time you've finished reaching an agreement, most 
lay people don't even remember what they agreed to or why. They're just exhausted by the process. So I started developing my own process, my own protocols that merge the uh, aspects of uh, the psychological dynamics, the therapeutic processes, of reframing questions and asking open-ended questions, and then taking my experience as an attorney, knowing what the legal standards usually were and are, and blended them to create my own protocol and approach. And because it was my own protocol and approach, most attorneys were just, you know, I actually had this one woman look at me and said, say, there is no way you could become a mediator, Darcia. You're an African-American female and the Northwest, they're gonna want a white, elderly kind of grandfatherly type to tell them what to do to influence them. Well, that just was the icing on the cake. I decided to approach it differently. And like Roger said, I approached it from a grassroots roots basis. Um, and I'll share a bit about my marketing and how I developed a very strong practice that I love. Matter of fact, I'm trying to find someone to take it over um, at some in a couple of years. Um, but it was a unique process and it's not geared towards just money. So I'm going to be quiet now, but thank you for inviting me and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Darcia. We would like to ask our uh, guest if uh, they would like to say a few words about themselves. If anyone would like to do that, please do so before we get started. Uh, Kim, please go ahead. Um, hello, everybody. I hope the noise in the background isn't uh, interfering. Uh, my name is Kim Otai. I've been a mediator for about three, four years now. Um, as you may know, in Kenya, the mediation process is uh, going through a period where we're trying to educate a lot of the public about it. Um, Roger Moss was talking about uh, something which reminded me. This afternoon, I was watching a Horizon documentary on signals from outer space. And one of the things that you makes you think is that if human beings have to come up with a new paradigm of sharing resources and working together. And I think mediation is one of the arrows in your sheath of tools which will help us. So I'm looking forward to this session and thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, Kimotai, I'm, I'm finally learning your name and I hope I say it correctly, Kimotai. Um, Angela, uh, please go ahead. Um, greetings, everyone. Um, good morning to the people on the other side of the pond. And good evening to everyone on this side. My name is Angela Munga Mwadumbo. And uh, Ishmael, I'll send you a present if you pronounce my last name properly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, it's, as I was listening to all of you, it's amazing how we are, we think that the experiences are different on the other side, um, but it turns out by virtue of the fact that we are all human, we all go through the same process. I was listening to Darcia and um, I actually got, I have the exact same story of how I got into mediation. After practicing law for eight years, I realized that my clients are not getting the results that they thought they would get from court. And that is what uh, got me into mediation. And um, it was around that time that uh, the mediation buzz was really loud here in, Af here in Kenya. And um, court annexed mediation was introduced in Kenya in as a pilot project in 2016. It only rolled out nationally in 2020. So I'm really looking forward to this session so that um, I can learn tips on how to market mediation because I'm primarily known as a lawyer, but I'm seeing better results and getting better satisfaction from my work through mediation. So I'm, I'm very glad and I'm very honored to be part of this session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angela Monga. Uh, Zoom doesn't allow me to read the rest of it, but I shall practice <laughs> once I get the full name. For now, we'll just stay with Angela. And of course, we have uh, Miss Amiri, uh, Miss Jane Amiri. So I have no difficulty with her last name, by the way. 
So Jane, Hello. if you can tell us about yourself. Thank you. Yeah, um, good evening, um, everyone, and good morning to those uh, who are um, in that time zone. My name is Jane Amiri. I'm a mediator um, certified um, in 2017. I work um, here in Kenya. I have a social work background and um, development work training. And uh, I work as a consultant. I am delighted to be here and I look forward to learning. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Jane. Anyone else would like to share a few words? Uh, please, Lydia. Hi, good evening, everyone, and good morning to our uh, fellow mediators in San Francisco. My name is Lydia Mwangi. I'm an advocate by profession. I'm a researcher and I'm also a professional mediator. I have done mediation in private capacity. I am um, in the process of trying to start doing the court annex mediation. And I'm also trying to, I've been employed by the government for the past seven years. So um, as a researcher, I used to work for the judiciary of Kenya. So now I'm just trying to get out there into practice as a lawyer and also into mediation as a professional mediator. So I'm really happy to be in this session and also to learn from all of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Lydia. Um, opportunities, if anyone else wants to share a few words before we get started. Uh, yes, Phyllis, please unmute yourself. Good evening and good morning to everyone. Uh, this is a very great opportunity for me today. I rarely have such uh, time, but I'm glad I have this time today. I, I, I did my law degree when I was working at the bank and it wasn't until the fourth year of my law degree that I came to learn about ADR. So I worked with the bank and when I left now to start my own practice, I thought I was going to be an ADR practitioner, but be as it may, it wasn't paying the bills. So I had to incorporate the litig lit litigious aspect. And with time, I've been able to start uh, running my, my, my side of the, of the show. In my law firm, I have a team that deals with litigation issues. And personally, I deal with all the ADR matters. So I'm very glad to be here today. And let, let's see where I went wrong in, in starting out. But I'm happy to be where I am today. And I'm just happy for this uh, session. Thank you so much, Phyllis. And uh, anyone else? Yes. Um, Christine. Yes, uh, sorry, my, my name is Christine Kipsang. Um, I think when I was registering, it came as Christy. Um, I, I don't know why I was baptized that way, but I'm Christine for this uh, purpose. So I'm happy to be in this place. Um, I mean, this conference um, from the start, from no, uh, 30th of November, and I quite understand the stories that have been shared because uh, for me as a mediator, I started off by being introduced by a lecturer to join um, arbitration. And then later on, I realized mediation is where I want those uh, peaceful agreements, you know, that you get and everybody shakes their hands and they go on. And I've um, been uh, with the court annexed mediation since 2016. Actually in Kenya, I'm number four, you know, because we have a register, I'm 004. And I quite, um, as an advocate, I've realized that it's mediation where you get sat satisfied as a person. And also you see people getting peaceful solutions to their problems. So I quite like what Roger uh, said about uh, the fact that you don't need to market yourself. People will come to you by the fact that they are getting referrals. So for me, what has worked most is the word of mouth because I've done the quarter next mediation at the same time I've done uh, private clients, if you like, who come for mediation through the word of mouth. I'm still here to use social media. I quite shy away from Facebook, but I'm trying to join LinkedIn and Facebook. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that uh, introduction, Christine. And uh, we'll go to Rashid. Yes. <clears throat> Greetings, everyone. 
Yeah, and uh, I'd like to to say thank you for, to Asiliana Hub and uh, all the organizers of this wonderful session. My name is Rashid Mwiza. I'm based in Kenya, the south coast of Kenya, that is uh, Kwale County. And um, I'm a lawyer by profession and also a certified professional mediator. I'd like to just to give a small story about my mediation journey. I'm inspired by Roger Moss. So in 2017, I was supposed to join law school, but unfortunately, I couldn't. I deferred. So I got, I was idle. I didn't know what to do. And then I met an anthropologist who's been very influential to my life. And one of the key things he told me was, why not venture into alternative dispute resolution? So he connected me with someone in the UK who later I learned was his cousin. His name is Dr. Mohammed Keshabji. He's won the Gandhi Ikeda Prize for Peace, if you've heard of him. And then 2018, I went to law school. I finished law school last year, but uh, there's still pending issues. So I'm a trainee advocate. So then I reignited my passion for mediation because Dr. Mohammed had shown me how to, how to use mediation to help the community, enhancing conflict competence through mediation in the grassroots. So for me, <clears throat> it started from a community perspective, which was which later developed into a professional line now, because I cannot practice as an advocate. I, I chose to focus on mediation. So I'm really happy to be here to learn and also to get an opportunity to share more about my experience in mediation. I formed a, a mediation consultancy. So I'm beginning my journey as well as a proprietor in mediation. Thank you and back to you, Ms. Wangari. Thank you so much, Rashid. And uh, if no one else has any word to say, we'd like to go ahead and get a start if it's okay with you. I'm gonna ask uh, uh, my colleague Tanya and Roger to uh, moderate the chat room and also if anyone, you've had some difficulty, technical difficulty, people go in and out, uh, but as a co-host you can go ahead and admit them uh, because once I do share screen, my screen will be limited. Um, so I do rely on my colleague, uh, continue with that. I apologize for some of the background noise here that I have today. I hope it's not too much of a disturbance and uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and do a share screen. Uh, go ahead, Roger, please. One quick remark. Uh, I'm actually gonna share a suggestion from Kim who, who made a, an excellent observation a little while ago. Uh, without intending any pressure, um, if, you're, if you're not uh, eating your dinner or, or tending to something else, uh, try turning on your camera. Kim pointed out that you know a huge theme running through this conference is online dispute resolution. And of course, we're all here today through this medium. Many are uncomfortable. So if you're uncomfortable, that's okay. Uh, but I just wanted to, I wanted to bring up what Kim said and appreciate that he did. Thank you so much, Roger. And the format in which we're gonna conduct today's uh, dialogue with you is going to be more of a panel discussion uh, to whereas um, me and my colleague will moderate the discussion. We do uh, invite you to interrupt us anytime that you have a question and uh, we'll keep track of raise hand. If you can raise hand digitally, that would be wonderful. Is it much easier to keep track? And um, we have a set of a slide again that we'll go over with you, but uh, you know, that is gonna guide us through our conversations mainly. So before we get started, is there any special request from anyone in, in terms of being able to convey the information better on our part or any suggestions? If none, I'm gonna go ahead and do share screen with you now to bring us to the slide presentation that we have prepared specifically uh, for this purpose today. So bear with me as I put our slides up here on the share screen and uh, 
Um, we, we do not have any video. I know last time we did a presentation, we had some technical difficulty with the audio, but there are no videos. Uh, so um, hopefully everyone can see the screen. If anyone has any difficulty, uh, please let me know. Again, um, we want to acknowledge you uh, for what you do. We want to thank you for what you do. Uh, it is a great work. It's a sacred work, what we do. And uh, to be in your company today, for us, it's a privilege. So we also selfishly want to learn from you as well. So the more contribution you do, um, the more we can gain knowledge from you as well in terms of what we do. Um, as Roger said, you know, we are all connected in this. Uh, so on the mediation and marketing, we'll go ahead and start with uh, creating a thriving practice as a mediator or arbitrator. Uh, on the overview, reputation, shaping our professional image and outreach and relationship uh, referrals. And uh, lastly, we'll close out with innovation uh, to share with you the secret sauce. And I believe it was Phyllis who mentioned, if I'm not mistaken, that the word of mouth remains to be one of the best channels in terms of marketing. So we'll, we'll talk with you on that. So on the overview, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that to our panels and have them um, put in their input. If anything you would like to add, please go ahead, uh, Roger, Tanya, or Darcy. Garcia, would you like to say a few things at this point? And, and I might add some as well. Well, hold on, I'm struggling here. <laughs> You go ahead first. Okay, I just wanted to, to restate what I think is, speaking for myself, has made a critical difference in everything that's happened for me in the last seven years and, and really been central to, uh, you know, with God's grace, finding work that I, has me thriving spiritually and engages me mentally and we help a lot of people our our primary work involves uh, helping people avoid homelessness but it connects to other things too and so that idea was um you know that referring to our program as mediation thinking of myself as a mediator didn't work ever since that lunch i had with colin rule that that idea was just in the front of my mind so when um the Bar Association of San Francisco approached me because of my real estate background to create a, a program. The first thing I said was, we can't call it mediation. And we came up with conflict intervention service, which has its own issues we've come to learn, but it's interesting. Um, very quickly, people started referring to it by the initialism CIS and that has stuck. Um, and, and the idea here that it's not merely that people may not know what mediation is, or they may not have had a good, um, good experience with it. But for me, you know, what is fun about mediation? And, and when I say the word mediation, I use that as a kind of an umbrella term that connects to anything one can do as a professional neutral. Uh, it, 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 I include therapists in their core work, um, lawyers kind of at the margins. I'm kind of a anti-lawyer lawyer, lawyer to be really frank with you. Um, but this idea that the different, we have a lot of different kinds of services in our program. I offer a lot of different kinds of services in my private practice, which I maintain, which is an important part of my life. So I do a lot of coaching of people. I do a lot of situational analysis. You know, my zone is real estate. People come to me for help with real estate, even though what's really going on is often very personal disputes between partners or among family members and those kinds of issues. So we have to have the empathy and the soft skills. Um, but this idea that there are other words and there's more than one word it, to message what I am, what I do, how I can help you. And then I get, I get what you're feeling and, and what you need. And I can help you find the way and part of how I interact with people from the very first moment um, sets, sets the direction. And then 
remaining nimble and ability to change on a dime. We call ourselves chameleons at CIS. Um, so all, for me, all these things are all interrelated ideas uh, that in, in, and I've never been able to experiment with it in a large scale until I got involved with the CIS program in San Francisco. And we've been phenomenally successful, not just in helping people stay in their homes, uh, but in terms of changing the dialogue in, in the San Francisco Bay Area, people are noticing that we are really different. So they, <laughs> this is like the, the meat eater's dream. They call us and ask us, can you do this? Can you do that? We, they, we've pushed our program into new areas because people like how we show up. We smile, we're, we're filled with joy, we're compassion first, and then backed up with a lot of very sophisticated expertise and skills. So again, these are general comments I'm making, but they're, they're big themes, but I have found they're immensely practical and they work. Darcia, Tanya? Um, I can just go, go ahead and I'll, I'll go, Roger. I'll just second everything you're saying. Um, I think that I think it was Phyllis who said word of mouth is one of the best things. And I tend to agree with her. I remember um, being, I think, in my second year of law school and I, um, I went to an event and um, Kamala Harris, I don't know if all of you know who she is, but her brother-in-law, his name is Anthony West. He's one of my mentors. And he also um, had an opportunity to serve with President Obama, um, I think his first term as attorney general, assistant attorney general. Well, he told me, he made sure that I understood as a young law student never to let a connection pass me by. And, you know, he, he was very successful at that time. He was a partner at Morrison Forrester, one of the larger law firms in San Francisco, but he made it a point to impress upon me, you know, the main thing is to make those connections, those meaningful connections, and that's going to take you far. And he made sure that um, I understood that and I took that with me and that has that has been successful, um, very successful for me um, over the 10 years since I graduated law school. Um, I think people can see through phoniness. And so if you come in um, to a situation as if you are the um, you know, the ruler and executioner and, you know, you, you um, don't have that compassion. Um, as Roger mentioned, then I think your career won't be as um, successful. So I think just for me, the humbleness that I bring in into a situation, the compassion and the real life um, care that is exhibited is, and I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself because at the end, we're gonna talk about what's your secret sauce. But I think for me, that's one of my secrets is that I genu genuinely do care um, to the point where sometimes I have to, um, engage in a lot of self-care afterwards because if you if you take on too much um you won't be able to be effective for others so that's all i'll share for now and um i'll pass it over to garcia okay so um when i think about developing a practice and marketing practice i think about three areas first of all what kind of type what type of mediation do you want to do what type of conflict resolution? Some people want to do evaluative, where you're evaluating and you're weighing in. That's more like a settlement conference where you're saying, this is my opinion as to who's right, who's wrong. Usually you're shuttling back and forth to get the shuttle diplomacy going. And so the people then that you're going to have to persuade to hire you are attorneys. Because usually in my area of the neck of the woods, 
who determines who's the mediator and shuttle diplomacy evaluative mediations are the attorneys. And so that's one area. If you want to do facilitative mediation that allows you or or strategic, because I okay, facilitative mediation is more where you're just you are facilitating an important conversation between the parties involved. Those types of mediations that I've done are usually to transform relationships. So you've got neighbors who are feuding, you've got parents who disagree, on, uh, uh, you've got children who disagree about the elder care of their, how their, their elders are being cared for, so they're in a disagreement. Facilitative mediation is usually more based upon your connection with people, individual people being able to uh, hear what they have to say and facilitate that conversation while not stepping in and telling them what to do. Usually that's more word of mouth in your communities. And, and there's three communities I think you have to be involved in to be able to develop a strong practice in that area. The last area, which, which is, well, the strategic and transformational. So strategic mediation, you usually have a background in whatever field you're working in. So if it was Roger, he's working as, he's got a background in real estate and, he, and he's doing a facilitative mediation, but he's also providing information to his clients because of his expertise to make good decisions. Um, so I'm not gonna go through them all, but once you decide what type you wanna practice, then you can figure out where you, what connections are gonna bring you the best uh, results. If you wanna work with uh, individuals to resolve problems, usually then you need to be involved in your community. Service to the community and organization where you are serving your community in some way and therefore people are getting to know you. Uh, if you are wanting to do more transformational mediation, then you are going to be involved with more therapeutic communities or people who are going to refer you because you are able to connect and help transform relationships. So that would be my first step, you know, decide what type of mediation you want to practice and then who, then that's going to determine where you need to market your services and how you can market them for free of charge or what uh, organizations you want to join so you can facilitate referrals. I hope that's helpful. <laughs> Thank you, Darcia. And I want to acknowledge that Wangari has her hand up. Yeah. Yes. Uh, hi. And, uh... Uh, firstly, my comments may just go off uh, this discussion, and I want to say that every interaction with your team um, has actually come up uh, like upside down. I want to say that uh, when uh, we are having a session that is going to take us through how to market our mediation practice, I've come knowing that we will talk about the four P's of marketing, we will talk about uh, you know branding, we will we will talk about but each time, even the last time when we had a session with yourselves, uh, when we had a session with yourselves, I was left with the human part. I was not left with the technical of this work. And, and, and for me, even as, because even I look at just how we've started this conversation and I've absorbed already so much, even if we were closing the conversation right now about probably like how to move on, is it, you, you're really just, causing us to get to appreciate that this work is so human. And I actually, from interacting with these conversations with yourselves, I actually started questioning myself, Wangare, do you really think this is it? This is the, this is a field, this is a field for you or who do you need to be? I, I moved into, so who do I need to be so that I can actually be that for the people who are in dispute? Because it's always clear for me that yes, in dispute, even myself, when I'm in dispute, uh, inside is, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm crying, I'm crying on the inside. So I really get that with the people, but I'm looking at even how probably I've handled um, the, the, the cases uh, that I've handled, uh, the, the level of compassion that for me has become so clear as I've interacted with yourself. And that is what then appeals to people. It's what then also helps the process. It's what then makes that person now tell someone else, please consult Wangari, please consult Ishmael, because they could feel that um, in, in, in ourselves. So I want to say for me so far, uh, yes, the experience is a bit inverting, um, a bit inverting. And when I'm saying this, I'm also inviting my colleagues because I'm very clear the, 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 the mediation training that they took, this level of 
compassion that you keep bringing to us is not what we experience as part of let's say the training or even as part of the practice um not that we did not get that mediation i mean it's a very compassionate but i think that was supposed to really come from yourself but what i get is that this is it, it's actually a very very highly compassionate work and to, that's what now causes you to become the choice which probably is what we are now discussing today thank you wow thank, thank you so you, much Angari. i i'm yeah i'm so deeply touched by what you said and and appreciative and and part of what i've heard you just say it reminds me um actually it reminds me of something a, a professor said to me long ago i i studied history in college but uh, i've always been fascinated by where where people meet together in a particular landscape and how a particular landscape whether it's rural or urban or high desert or tropical the landscape shapes the interactions and is is a player in the interactions um, and and so that's been a theme through my life and i didn't really start thinking deeply about that until i started this work uh, but the, this professor said to me roger the historian always learns most about himself or herself uh, when, when, when we're in our studies and what we produce, because I'm really holding up a mirror to myself, things that interest me connect to me. And so where, where that bridges to, to this work now is whoever we are and whatever brings us joy. And most of us are really curious. Most of us, even introverted, people like I really am. I'm very shy and introverted, but I love people. I'm endlessly curious about people. Um, and, and I'll stop here as a specific example of what I'm talking about, landscape and people. Um, and this comes from what I love, but also my real estate career. It was about walking around real estate. That might be downtown. It might be a shopping center out in the woods somewhere. Um, it might be an office building. It might be, you know, who knows what, what the environment is. It's, it's going to the environment and feeling it and touching it and feeling and touching and, and, and getting uh, the people that inhabit it. And that's, I just find that endlessly fascinating. So in our program in San Francisco before COVID, there are some areas of town uh, uh, that are, that are um, have a higher concentration of homelessness people and also residential buildings where they live. And a lot of our work is there. So we go walk around. We go drop in uh, on communities, you know, that might have 50 or 200 residents and they have property management staff and they have case managers. We drop in with cups of coffee and hang out and talk to people, ask them how they're doing. <laughs> Just check in. And we learn a lot about everything doing that by, by going, by the way, to the conflict, we call it, when we, we sometimes go to people's homes to help figure out what's going on and we have these discoveries. Um, we also know that people are just more comfortable at home. So we don't wanna make them come to us, we go to them. And whenever we do that, we learn wonderful things, we connect with people and we get more casework. So I will, I will stop there. But it, again, it's a, it's a joy for all of us who are doing it. I want all of you to be joyful in whatever you're doing. Thank you so much, Roger, for that. And also, of course, echoing what Vangari said and you said, uh, let me share with you that I've been an educator at the graduate level for a couple of universities locally in my region of Silicon Valley for the last 26 years. I, among the courses that I've taught, marketing, advanced marketing, consumer behavior in academic has been one of the courses that I've taught quite a few times, actually, through the years having approximately 10,000 students in the 26 years. Um, I just want to share with you that what we are doing today is going beyond the four Ps of marketing and the nine Ps and the 17 Ps actually that are identified so far in the marketing and consumer behavior. What we do is we act from our hearts. Definitely we pay attention to what is attractive out there and we share that with you through the mechanics but the paradigm in which we operate is quite different. 
we try to be a better human being by being compassionate. And when we work with parties who come to us, which we do not use the word intake, for example, we use the word um, help request. When help requests come to us, our goal is beyond compassion to make sure that we preserve the integrity of the parties. That is an important work for us. So with that said, um, I'll share this slide with you and briefly touch on that. And if my colleagues have anything to add, uh, jump in, or if you have any question, as I said before, please do feel free to interrupt us. Um, my colleagues are monitoring the raised hand and will call on you as I'm doing the uh, full screen, I wanna have access to, to the raised hand, but they're, they're moderating it. So you can interrupt us anytime with any questions. Uh, we do, as far as the image goes, professional, professional image based on what Van Gari said is, who do we wanna be, who we want, people to know us as. That is the professional image that the fancy picture or a great bio, but who we want to be, who, who do we want to be presented as? Which space are we creating? And for those help requests, how can they reach, reach out to us based on who we identify ourselves as? That is an important question. Yes, no. That is something you, yes. Can I just interrupt you one second? Because we're saying four Ps and some mm -hmm. people on here are not familiar with the four Ps. Can, Let me can explain, you please explain that. That, yeah, that would in include the, in the base, me, by the way. <laughs> oh, in the, in the basic of marketing, basic marketing, we work with the four Ps of the product, which can be tangible or non-tangible. So what we do in mediation, we, uh, from a marketing point of view, uh, the P of product, uh, can be considered as what we do, our work, which is not a tangible product, which is mediation. That is, you can look at it if it's in our field, the P being the product, tangible, non-tangible. So tangible could be a milk that you buy from grocery store or bread or whatever, that's, that's a product. But the non-tangible is the work that we do, it's a service that we offer. Uh, if you're a divorce attorney and clients comes to you, you're providing a service, that is a P. P of product. And then the other one is a P of promotion. How do you promote that product? And of course, that is a whole lecture in itself in terms of you know, market segmentation, market identification, how you're gonna, you know, how you're gonna introduce that product. And of course, as a big component of that comes the advertising. How has it been advertised? And of course, you know, we'll talk more to you about here in the in the next couple of slides, uh, the power of social media that exists in the P of our product in mediation. So if you wanna look at it technically from an academic point of view, you can follow the conversation on the four Ps in that direction. And of course the P of place, where are you gonna be providing that product? As you can see on the slide here, what is called geographic identity. Are you gonna be local? Are you gonna be regional? Are you gonna be international? Who do you want to serve? And of course, the most important part of it is the P of price. So we have the product, we have the promotion, we have the place. And the last P is the P of price. How are you pricing your services? Is it too high? Is it too low? Are you too cheap? People are going to look at the pricing and go like, wait a minute, that's not for me. It really doesn't have any value. Or are you going to price it so high that people may say, wait a minute, it's expensive, therefore it's good. And I really want that because it is expensive. People think that way, at least in the United States, in the context of the 4P that we talk about. So how are you gonna price yourself? That takes a lot of research. Again, it has to do with the P of place, how you're gonna promote it and what that product is. So these are basic four Ps of marketing in a nutshell. Of course, you know, we move on to P of packaging and so on and so forth. But if we stay with the basic of it, that's what we're looking at. Did that answer the question of the four Ps? Okay, great. In the work that we do, again, relationship is very important. And, uh, you know, uh, what you can create, the example of it was what Tony shared. You know, there's a lot of value. It is important. It is not a coincidence that we come across people. There's a purpose, there is a reason. Why are we here today with you? Why are you here today with us? Ask that question when it comes to the relationship. 
and then referrals. How do we interact with each other, with the entities that are out there, with the attorneys, with the institutions? Why should they send us someone who is in need? What is about us that distinguishes us from our colleagues? And our relationship with our colleagues in terms of our referrals, if it's not my area of a specialty, am I willing to give that to my colleague? And is my colleague is willing to do that for me? What type of network am I building? And what is the future power of that network? These are some of the questions you must ask yourself, especially if you're in business for yourself, doing mediation. These are some important questions that you must ask yourself and establish a paradigm out of which you're gonna operate. That is your success. That defines your success. But really, it is not much intellectualizing that as much as it is that is coming from your heart because it is much easier to convey that information rather than intellectually try to convince other that you have what is best that you're offering. So with that, I'll leave it to our panel to see if they have anything else to share on that. I don't want to I talk would, too much. I would add that you know part of doing this work successfully is I think valuing yourself and, I, and acknowledging what kind of lifestyle you want as well. You know, the P of price can't just be dictated by the outside world and what they want to give you. You have to decide what do I need to be able to do this work? And frequently, I think the mistake that people make is they don't try to gradually enter this field you know, you, you, you want to build bridges so that you can enter this field successfully and support yourself. So as an attorney, you know, I didn't just open my legal, my mediation practice and leave all my other work. I slowly started developing that legal practice, a uh, mediation practice so that I could still continue to support myself and then eventually had a full-time practice. So I think you need to look at bridges and you have to also decide that if you really want a practice, you're going to plant seeds that might not blossom for a few years. So when you start marketing yourself, you want to be able to do it inexpensively using the bridges that you have already in your community. For example, if you are a therapist who wants to go into this practice, the first place I would go is to my therapeutic community and say, how can I help your clients? Is there a need from your clients for these services? Do they need help in mediating elder care disputes? Do they need help in resolving conflicts within um, uh, estranged family members? Uh, it, it go, you decide what bridges you can go to that already exist for you before you jump in. And my question was always, how can I help your clients? What do your clients need that they're not getting and why? And consistently, what I was finding is the clients were finding the legal process too expensive. The therapeutic clients were finding that process didn't resolve what they needed to resolve to move forward in their relationships. So that would be my suggestion when you start thinking about the four Ps, also think about lifestyle and how you can slowly or gradually become full-time without uh, creating a lot of financial distress for you and your family. Garcia, you had uh, asked me about sharing your screen. I don't know if you still want to do that or want to do it later, but I do believe Ishmael can make make that happen I do you're, that. You're muted. Know, but you know because i was i was looking at there's different ways for marketing and the, they're so powerful today because the visuals are so strong and one of the sites that i had been looking at uh that did uh transformational mediation had an amazing uh, site but we i can wait to get there we weren't talking about specifics and I okay. can wait to share that. No problem. I'll I'll make a, I'm going to make a quick comment, um, and I promise it will be quick this time. Just on the relationship thing, for me, that's like a trans-dimensional expression. It, it's about people I know. It's about a process. It's about deep interconnections with the world universe around me, including you know, other people that can speak uh, languages. At, uh, at, but I want to, Kim made a very interesting comment in the chat about a distinction that he saw from some things Darcia said. And so I, the quick thing I want to point out is it pertains to my work as an example of this blend of marketing and real results and how I get them is 90% of the work I do involves tenants and landlords. 
my career was in was in commercial real estate, big retailers, big shopping centers. So what I need, what I what I'm constantly telling the lawyers in particular, and everybody else who will listen, is being tough and destructively adversarial when you're trying to solve a problem with a tenant and a landlord is not the way to go because you might win, but then Whoever the loser is, and often the, the winner too, they're, they're forever damaged. You missed an opportunity to reset the relationship. You may not be able to make them be best friends, but by definition, a tenant landlord relationship needs to work for both sides or it doesn't work at all. And, and so many people don't get that simple idea. And um, so, there is no there is no real distinction in this landlord tenant work uh, between focusing on the relationship and and solving the problem in the way I do it. Um, and I will stop there because now I'm not being brief. Thank you so much, Roger. Let's move on uh, to the next slide. And uh, you know, actually, the relationship is the one Roger was mentioning. Um, how do they find you? The first point of contact, providing free presentation at CLE and other events, and building relationship with organizations. So in other words, uh, promoting, promoting, promoting yourself. If you look at it from an academic point of view, that'll be a P of promotion on, on the relationship part of it. I know we have quite a bit of material. Darcy also wants to share screen with us, so we'll move forward but please do interrupt us if you have any question. Uh, some of the ways uh, that we practice at CIS, we can share those with you, has to do with the flyers that we have out there in terms of our outreach, the property management that we work with in terms of tenant landlord dispute. As you know, in CIS, as Roger mentioned also, uh, the majority of work that we do has to do with tenant landlord relationship and their dispute. And those are help requests that we receive mostly. Uh, we do also have on the next slide, a sample of our flyer, that one of the flyer that we use actually, so you can take a look at it visually and see uh, what are these digital and printed flyer, flyer look like. We still do use a hybrid of these flyers, mostly digital, but if need be for the areas where there are no access, uh, we do print them and then we distribute them to make sure people are aware of these services that we have to offer. Uh, naturally, website nowadays, especially if you're on a social media platform, are very powerful tool that you can utilize and be able to convey the information. And eventually in the next uh, three to five years, with the development of ODR, uh, your website becomes more interactive to whereas a lot of transaction takes place 24 seven, 365 days a year, uh, you know, days in a year. And it depends how you design that website and what form of interactive tool you'll be using in order to, to be able to reach and also uh, the help request can reach you. Uh, presentations against are important such as what we do today uh, to bring about um, awareness and education uh, whenever it's needed so that people become aware of the service and become aware of the expertise that we all have to offer. Uh, so with that said, before I move on from this slide, I would like to ask our panel if there's anything else they'd like to add to what I said. Can I just um, respond Please. because Kim, Kim placed a, a comment in the chat box and he says another aspect which he wishes to support is community participation. He's taken many meetings with advocates, attorneys, which have generated next to no mediations. However, getting a pastor on board and surprisingly a head teacher has had them refer several clients to Kim. And so he says, think of people who, um, who those in problems go to for advice. Exactly. They are ones, they are appreciative of mediation. Mm -hmm. So I, I just wanted to, to, to add that, um, you know, this ties perfectly with doing some things you, you have to do for free. I heard a quote um, from someone that said, entrepreneurs do things for free. People who work under a nine to five mentality, they charge for everything. And so this is very, um, 
pivotal, I think, because I was just in a situation where, um, you know, my husband is, is an entrepreneur as well. And he did a series of talks this past summer. They were free, but there were people in the room, in the virtual room who were stakeholders in various different organizations. He generated over $300,000 in business from doing those free presentations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think we need to learn how to, how to do things for free sometimes. And you, you never know what it will lead to. And I think that's an excellent point. Attorneys are the worst people to get referrals from, unless they're in a different field. Um, I, I think they're the weakest source. The, you want, as Tanya said, to work with people who are helping people solve problems, where people go to have their problems to solve. 80, I would say 50% of my referrals are from therapists. Therapists hate attorneys because they tend to make things worse because we're positional and we're not looking for a uh, common interest. You know, we tend to, in their minds, make more conflict. And that's because we weren't trained frequently and not how to make conflict. But I, I think that's just excellent advice. And what I wanted to share with you, uh, well, he's got to enable my screen. As, as well, can you enable my screen so I can share? Anyway, I was going to, if, if I, one of the things, I, I use old fashioned things. One of the easiest ways to promote your practice is to come up with a brochure. A brochure that you can leave with people that says, these are the area, this is my background, this is my mediation experience, and this is where I, where I practice. I do mailers to therapists every six months, and my whole practice has come from that. I do mailers to doctors every six months, because when, you, when the doctors and when people are depressed or sad, they see their doctor, well, I'm going through a bad time, and I don't want to get a divorce or, you know, etc. cetera. They, they talk to these people, and these people will refer to me. Most of these people I've never met, but they've gotten my mailers for years. But, and it's a very inexpensive way of doing this. The other thing is find, making sure your website tells a story about who you are and what's most important to you. Um, your website should be visually moving today. Static websites are not the strongest. And I, I would show you this, but I can't share the screen right now. So um, I will, just as the host, it's disabled screen. But when we get back, I'm gonna show you some examples of just very simple brochures that I designed, as well as what I think websites that make a difference. So, thank you. Ishmael, you're mu muted, I, or I've lost my audio. No, 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 you're absolutely right. Thank you so much, uh, Darcia. I just wanted to show everyone uh, a sample of one of the fire that we actually use at the CIS program, the Bar Association of San Francisco, as you can see on the left side of the screen that I'm sharing with you at the moment. And of course, um, the message we try to keep it simple, we also emphasize, as you can see at the bottom, one of the uh, uh, distinguisher of our services, how we differentiate ourselves, you know, from a marketing standpoint, from other services that might be available. Um, as you can see at the bottom left of my screen, it says we guarantee a response within 24 hours, 365 days a year. That is a differentiation factor for CIS. That's what we do. We guarantee a response. If someone, if a help request comes in, it would take us normally anywhere from 20 minutes to about two hours to get back to the help request. But we do guarantee it, that you're gonna hear from us. So we hold ourselves also by the same token responsible to make sure that we do reach out to people who are reaching out to us in return. So again, it's important to have the message that you want to convey in a flyer that if you're going to distribute one. I don't know if my colleagues have anything else to add to the flyer subject. 
No, I'm gonna I, go ahead my and... mind is going in so many different directions. I want to quickly go back to something Tanya shared. Um, and Tanya, I, I, I should let you maybe talk about this a little bit more, but I attended most of the sessions that uh, Tanya's husband uh, put on and, and um, it was, they were not business courses, okay? They, they, Tanya's husband and also Tanya are working at the center of, of racial conflict issues in America. And um, Amar, her husband, is widely known for his work in teaching cultural humility. Um, there are other, th other things about his background. Tanya, I'll let you share. I don't wanna be, break any privacy, but this is powerful work to help people. It is, I will say this, I don't think you'll uh, object, Tanya. T uh, Tanya and her husband are deeply spiritual oriented people. Everything they do comes from that context and they're very successful professionals too. And that's okay. And there's a relationship between those two things. Um, so Tanya, I don't know if you wanna add or, or, or disown me at this point, please do. <laughs> no, and you know, and I think um, I appreciate that. And it's, it is true, you know, the, the, like I said before, you can come with every, everything that everyone has said today is very valuable. And I think you cannot divorce that relationship caring piece from it because people that will attract people because everyone doesn't have that. So, um, you know, from from what Roger was saying and and the talks that my husband put on, he he didn't go into the talks with the you know his sole purpose wasn't to um, you know get clients or he didn't know what he was going to get from that. But just being genuine and addressing a need at that time, right? It was right after the um, George Floyd murder. He presented, you know, some information about what is needed, and several different um, organizations reached out. This is what we need, and so, like, I think Darcia or maybe Kim said, positioning yourself in the right place, and I think also the right time. It's very essential. Very essential. Thank you so much, Tanya. Being mindful of time, I, I realize that we have about, I think, 35, 35 minutes left. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go through flyer a little, I mean, through the presentation a little bit quicker because we want to make sure that we give time for discussion. And also, um, I'm sure Darcia has more to share with you. We want to make sure that that platform is available. Uh, so the next slide we move to, well, we have look at the uh, CLE other events. And uh, I think Tanya, cover that pretty well, being in the right place in the right time. Uh, you can take an event and that event can turn into um, the promotion of the services that you offer, whether that's a local, national, international. As an example, you know, with, and of course, the, the name of the game is patience. Uh, plant the seed, but be patient for it to, to grow. Uh, you cannot expect, you know, there are times where as you get immediate response, but that, Part of building relationship, uh, patience is required. Uh, at CIS now, we are being reached uh, internationally. That's the focus that we have uh, by not only our colleagues from Canada, uh, but also Germany, Romania, and other countries, in addition to different jurisdiction within, within the United States. Again, the word of mouth is powerful. And if you offer something of quality from a whole different paradigm of serving humanity, People do reach out to you. Manifestation of it is being with you here today in what we do. Let me just move forward to, sorry, some of the website of Successful Mediator, which again, we'll be glad to share some of this with you in, uh, through the links later on to Vangari and she'll distribute these links if you need to look further of on successful mediation. Uh, building relationship with organization is important. Uh, definitely, you know, reaching out to court panels, bar association, and collaboration with other mediation organization is part of an ongoing campaign that you would have 
with respect to the fee of promotion, how you promote yourself and the services that you have to offer. Uh, referrals, again, going back to what was said at the beginning and the uh, word of mouth itself, building relationship and the network you establish, as well as adopting the technology of social media referrals, anywhere from Instagram, Facebook, the event that you're gonna sponsor on those platforms that really doesn't cost anything uh, when it comes to Facebook and Instagram, but then you can look at uh, places like Yelp that we look at, uh, for example, in terms of uh, whether it's available or not. And of course, powerful tools such as Twitter uh, to have a presence, having an account and be able to communicate with your colleagues. Uh, so on the secret sauce itself, the question that is imposed is what is your secret sauce? Find your niche and develop it. So again, goes back to your individual, to your talent, your skill, who you are, who you want people to see you as. And once that platform, once that paradigm has been created, then develop that paradigm. This brings us to end of this slide. I wanna make sure that I'm gonna stop the share screen and open it for discussion, for question that you may have, anything that we have covered, and also to my colleagues to share anything that they wanna to add to what was said already. Thank you. Thanks, Ishmael. I wanna acknowledge uh, there's, there's some, some items showing up in the, in the chat that reflect this tension around when doing things for free or not doing things for free. And I wanna emphasize that it's, it's, a, it's an individual, um, it, it, it's, a, it, it, it's gonna be different for each one of us. Um, and I, I do tons of things all the time to help people for pro bono. I have, as I've gotten busier and, and be actually making a living now full time doing this work, I don't, I, I, I don't have the amount of time to do things for free that I used to. So I've developed some basic rules, like um, I'll, I'll, I'm always willing to help somebody who isn't going to get any help if, if they don't get it from me, if they're, if they're indigent and there's, there's nowhere for them to turn, to turn, which is sometimes for other reasons than just economics. Mm -hmm. I like to show up for those kind of people. Yeah. Um, the, the, when we give things, I've become leery of giving things to way, away to people I know can pay for services mm. who are, are, you know, organizations or individuals that are looking for freebies um, uh, that when it's not a, it devalues who we are to be the only person at a table who's not being paid to be there. So if you're in a commercial situation or a, or a a family situation where there's a lot of parties and people have lawyers and they, they have support. Um, the mediator should 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 not be the person that's sitting there not getting paid. There's a professional aspect to this that affects all of us to keep in mind. Um, some people uh, I know that have do things where they uh, like some real estate and business mediators. They'll go to trade groups and they'll do little trainings that are really affordable, you know, $5 a head or $20 a head, because they, these, these are sophisticated business people who are putting on these trainings and they know their audience doesn't value things they don't pay for generally. That's a, that's a, that is a generalization and it's not always true about each person, but generally speaking, it's true in my experience. So, um, Please jump in, Darcia. Yeah, and I'd like this to. This is add, the crosstalk. When, this is the I'm, mandatory <laughs> crosstalk part. When I'm say, when we say, you know, volunteer, give back to your community, or do things for free, I'm not talking about mediation services. I I volunteer to train and to lecture or to mentor people for free. When I sit down and do a service, that's not for free. I have a sliding scale because I really value that people who have less have the, a chance to have the best. 
So I don't want to just work for someone that can't pay my higher rate. So I have a sliding scale so I can serve those with less means as, as well as those with more. But I think they have to have some skin in the game. If they're not paying me, they won't take me seriously. Or two, they will go on and on and on. There's no, there's no natural constraints to get them to motivate them to agree. So when I do mediation services, I don't donate those for free with one exception. I have, vo I have volunteered a couple of times to help schools with medi to mediate conflicts with teenagers who are involved in bullying, things of that nature. But that to me then is a public service, but not my practice. So, what, and when you're out in your community providing lecturing or training or providing information, what you were doing is you're marketing, marketing yourself as an expert and to the people that you potentially can get referrals from. You become the expert, the person that they think of. Uh, that I do for free. But as Roger says, you've got to constantly balance that with the demands of your family and your practice, et cetera. And there's certain things that I no longer give for free because I wasn't getting enough back. Find your passion. If you enjoy working with families, then you know volunteer to explain how mediation can help families avoid high attorney's fees and resolve conflicts so they can continue with those important relationships. If you are interested in working in an employ employer employment co context, then you know that's where you step in to the communities at the unions to tell about your services. But uh, it's different than sitting down at the table and giving your work totally for free. That I, that's not what we're talking about, I think, most of us. No, not at all. Not at all. And I think also you can, you can share maybe a newsletter about a topic or something for free through email, and that would um, cause people to ask more questions. But I agree with Roger and Darcia. There's a line <laughs> that, that has to be drawn um, to some degree. But when you're present, doing presentations, if someone asks you to come and speak, you know, and speak at a to uh, on a topic, those are the kinds of things that you should really consider doing, even if it's not um, paid, because you can get your message out. And when they think about a mediator, they may want to use you. They may think of you. So thanks, um, Roger and Darcia, for for clarifying that. And also, I you're wanted welcome. to add what. Go Hang ahead. on, Ishmael. Wangari has her hand up. Uh, okay. Uh, I think there's something, is it Roger who talked about, or Ishmael, you talked about uh, when people are, um, are as teams. Eh? And I think part of um, how we are able to also to handle some of these things is when we are, uh, or we, we engage in it together. Because normally you would find that uh, if, for example, uh, we now say, okay, let's let's go out and uh, do talks or sessions. When you are as an individual, it becomes work. But when really you we are able like to be as a group, and now we are going into, for example, offer uh, um, talks in certain areas that help people to uh, clarify or appreciate um, that mediation can be used. I think when we are a as as a group and or, um, in in the in, in an initiative then it becomes, it's like when we say it makes uh, work lighter, it becomes like something that we are doing um, um, together. And I'll, I'll, I'll pick on, um, so some of the sessions we've uh, hosted today um, were um, open dialogue. And um, uh, one of the sessions um, of the open dialogue today was um, in the area of uh, matters to do with uh, what we refer to as uh, family wealth mediation, which uh, is, uh, the context around the succession inheritance and also uh, property transfer, multi-generational transfer. And uh, so the discussion at that particular point in time um, um, now was, clo was close, closed in with regard to what can, or what can mediators do or what, what can mediators do to cause uh, greater, um, better transfer of wealth when in families versus, versus the conflicts that we're experiencing. And one of the things that now came out from that session is that, oh, okay, probably we should uh, get, to get together and um, uh, let, let, uh, <clears throat> let, let people know more about being able to do wills, that they can consult uh, an, an advisor to support them to be able to do their wills uh, well. And then also that we can probably target uh, young people so that we can have a generation that grows up with an understanding about uh, better uh, ways to transfer wealth. 
I think of that now as in the context of this discussion that's going on now, because ideally those would probably be, let's say like now we reach out, let's say like to uh, institutions, to schools, to churches, um, to mosques, and we can go there and now offer, uh, let's say like such talks. Um, then the family mediation that now comes from such, um, if, um, if any, then that is the service. But I think it's when we come together, then that enables us to be able to do it in a, um, let me say in a way that feels that this is not work. Thank you, Ishmael. Thank you, Thank you so Wangari. much. I, I wanna encourage everybody to look through the chat messages. Some really great stuff is appearing there. So for, for example, um, Christy pointed out that she has had good luck providing free services to people who then refer paying customers to her. Um, and and then, then Lydia had, had a different kind of experience trying to get someone to use her service for free. And I really identified with that one. I did that last night late to an elder who published uh, a help request in a forum that I monitor. And I, I, think, I think I may have scared it away because that, what she described really bothered me. And, and my concern about the situation, um, I, I, I may have been, I may have been, sounded a little too um, emotionally attached or something. Um, and she still may contact me, but it's an interesting idea. Rashid asked, what's key about packaging yourself? I can ask that, answer that succinctly. Everything changed for me in doing this work when I quit promoting myself as a mediator and remembered I'm a old fashioned real estate guy who, who really understands real estate business because I think I remember it's about people and landscape. But when I, when I got back in my, you know, I had a successful professional life all over the United States for 30 years. When I got back into that mind, but then supercharged my toolkit with all the things we do, that's when things started to work for me as professionally again. What else? Who else has something? Thank you, Roger. I was going to echo that. And also, uh, I'm glad you brought up Rashid's question on the chat because I saw that as well. And of course, part of that, Rashid, if I um, add to what Roger said, uh, the confidence that you bring into the game is key to success. Uh, continuous education, staying in touch with what's happening in the field, as well as the technology, knowing what a cutting edge is, can give you a leverage, actually. Uh, we do have media mediators in the United States who charge upward of about thirty to fifty thousand dollars a day for a mediation. Mediations are done at three thousand dollars a day, five thousand dollar a day, ten thousand dollar a day. So, what is the distinguishing factor here? What separates one mediator from the other? It's the way we package ourselves. We it's the way we present ourselves, who we are to our client and the client that we serve. So these are some of the distinguishing factor. We can talk about this a lot, but then again, the confidence with the knowledge that you've gained, with the knowledge that you continue gaining, has to do a lot with what, what is it that you bring it, you know, to the table and how you convey that information. How you convey that information. And of course, not, not to course. forget, not to forget. Oh, I had an echo I, there. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Darcy. I'd like to say, I, I, I think from my perspective, which, which what is the difference between the person that charges 3,000 a day versus 30,000 a day for the certain services is depends on who you are serving. You know, I frequently work with families who are on a budget, who are marketing, they're getting a divorce, they're splitting everything in half at the worst possible time, and they've got to minimize costs and I want to serve their needs and I'm good at it. So, you know, though, so that's where I think the sliding scale for me works. Sometimes my mediations are 5,000 a day, but I'm usually doing two or three. I, I don't work that same way. I don't do that all day type thing where people don't have time to process because usually I'm not working with attorneys. If your target audience is attorneys and you've got attorneys are billing out $1,000 an hour and like Jams does, you, of course you're billing out at 10 to $30,000 a day, but look at the other people at the table, they got the money to spend. So who you serve in some regards in my, or who you wanna serve will also dictate what's reasonable or not reasonable for what you are charging for your services. And that, so I don't want people to feel bad because they don't feel like they can serve or charge a thousand dollars, you know, that kind of money. Yeah. 
you, it's kind of dictated in part by who you're serving. Thank you so much. Dr. That's Steve, a hugely that. important point. Uh, Tony yeah. Piazza, you know, on Maui, who flies to San Francisco once a month and works for a week and then goes home where he is engaged in martial arts all the time. Uh, the, the average amount of legal fees that have been spent among his clients before they hire him is $40 million. Totally different universe. And he's known in that universe. He's, uh, and, and, and speaking for myself, um, I've never been able to command the kind of dollars that I know my colleagues in this call get. And then I've just kind of morphed. I have a small footprint. I, I live in a little rental cottage. Um, we, we, we don't have, a, I don't have any overhead. So I like to keep things cheap. I'm also passionate about this. And this makes attorneys, some of you may, be, may get uncomfortable with what I'm about to say. I just think lawyers like doctors in the United States charge too damn much. And many mediators do too. And so Alan Alhadeth Darcia, one of, along with you, a mediator of, of mine here in the Northwest, you know, who he's very passionate about this idea. Keep your fees cheap, Roger. You, it'll be better for your soul. You'll help more people and you'll do just fine. And I, that works for me. Ishmael and I talk about this a lot. He's, he's in that boat, I think. Ishmael, would you, would you agree with that? You know, yes, yeah. thank you so much. And I want to share personally with you that uh, end of the day, it's not all, all about money. I know we're throwing some dollar amount at you, but we're just trying to give you some idea of the scale, what we do in the United States. I personally balance my work with a lot of pro bono work. I believe in it. And I, you know, through knowing the client, if I know for sure that they're disadvantaged and they cannot afford it, yeah. definitely a service is offered to them for pro bono. Uh, there's absolutely no charge. That's how I do it. I'm just sharing with you that, you know, there are people out there that cannot afford the service. They're in need. And yeah. for me, it's important to be able to reach out to them and be able to offer some of the expertise that I have at the level or it can help them to move forward wherever they're stuck at. Uh, Garcia, go ahead and Komatai has a question also. Please go ahead. Okay. okay, I also think it's important that you recognize who you wanna work for. You know, I don't wanna work for these attorneys who are charging $40 million to argue over whatever they're arguing for hours and hours. I enjoy working with people and making a difference in individual lives. That's my calling. So now, and I don't resent those people who, who or enjoy working with attorneys in that capacity. But I think you have to decide who you wanna work with and let your calling um, help you make that decision. Thank you so much, Dorothy. And Komatai has also imposed a question on the chat as well, but uh, since his hand is up, we'll have him ask us. Go ahead, Komatai. Uh, thank you. This is actually in response to Roger's idea about the costs of a mediation. Um, I happen to think that it's up to the individual to choose. We actually have an act in parliament where they're actually, they want to actually put a scale fees for the amount which mediators should charge. And I think that's a huge mistake. I happen to think that each individual should be able to charge what they think their time is valued at and what the circumstances are. If I'm sitting at a table with lawyers who are earning 4 million for the case, and I am charging $50,000, that to me is a good deal, but it's up to each individual. So uh, Roger Moss, yes, there's a certain amount which is due to your own personal ethics, but at the end of the day, everybody can choose their own uh, level at which they want to enter the mediation field. Thank you. I agree totally. Thank you, Kim. Um, I, I wanna, before we, go too much farther forward, I, it suddenly occurred to me that Wangari asked a question about mm -hmm. uh, my first comment when we started was this reference to the power of teams. And, and there, if, if you are someone who has a, a cottage industry, if you, come out of a, if you come out of another successful job or professional service you've provided and you can convert your customers to use you in different ways, you're much more likely to do well on your own than the rest of us who may not find that so easy to do. And so I have come to believe that 
um, bringing groups of mediators together, and especially if they practice the different kind of services that I think of as mediation, but they have different names, whether it's coaching or, or therapy or restorative justice practitioner, there's all these different individuation points, but they really represent not just different approaches to solving problems and healing people, um, but, but really different, they connect to each of us as individuals in different ways and they have different messaging and they're not mutually exclusive. So our, our program in San Francisco, and you'll learn more about this on Saturday, um, we all work, we check in with each other. We, we talk constantly about how, you know, seeking guidance from our team members on how to do, deal with a problem we have in front of us. So there's a, there's a working aspect to the team that's very important. But it's also true from a marketing standpoint, if you can hold out a group of people that are interdisciplinary, uh, have expertise in different fields, I think that is a more powerful way to attract business than just having one person by themselves hang their shingles, so to speak, if you if that may be an American metaphor, but put a sign out in front of your house that you're the mediator. I think you're more likely to get business if you're part of a group. Um, Wangari, does that answer your question on that point? Yeah, yes, um, it, it, it actually does, uh, yeah, respond to that very, very much. Um, allow me to, to put in something else. I think one of the, one of the areas that uh, is, and, 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 and this you could uh, probably tell us how you also just have decided yourself. You know, when you talk generally and say, oh, everybody can just decide on their fees and, um, and, and such, um, it takes me to the context that uh, quite a number of mediator, mediators come from very uh, diverse fields. Quite a number of them are, are probably it's like uh, retired from professions. You are uh, probably in management or in supervision or you are teaching or you're, you've been a farmer all through. And then now you've been tossed into this, this thing that's called mediation and then voila, I'm supposed to have a practice. And then if I'm running a practice, then I need to be able to uh, make sure that the service that I'm offering <laughs> I can be able to cost it, but I have no clue where um, or, or how to start from, how, how to, how to let's say, like handle that, which again, now, uh, uh, let me pick on what Kimutai has said with regard to like when um, in Kenya, there are discussions to develop a, a, a fee schedule for mediation services. I see it as a, a, as a reaction. And sometimes I would say that, yes, I, I would expect that many mediators would be very excited if there's a fee skill because they have no clue about where to start, how to start to cost themselves and to cost their service. And in as much as I, yes, I do not think that there is need for um, a fee skill in the area of mediation. So I think there's also an area of that being able to um, have the, being able to de determine this is my fees and it's based, let's say on what? Is it like every one hour, ideally someone like me, uh, doing something something else uh, would be let's say like yeah let's say fifty dollars and then it'll take five hours so I think there is probably also a need for that uh, and I'm speaking now into our colleagues because then something like what Kimutai has said with regard to us having um, as a, as a law that mediation in Kenya for one hour is twenty thousand shillings I think that's not necessary but as we speak now that is the crutch that mediators will fall for just because we do not understand that part of how to cost ourselves and our service. And yet I, it does not support us because you can offer the service. It, it's a free market, I would think so. Thank you. Thank you so can much, Angori. Can I just Angori, ask just... really quickly, Ishmael? Um, yeah. It's, it's ahead, around please. the same um, <laughs> conversation as fees. You know, regardless of what you charge, I think it's very important to state up front how you collect your fees. And I encourage everyone to do it in a um, retainer type of style up front because there's nothing worse than providing the service and then having to chase someone down for, for, your, for your fees. It, it just, it's, it's very horrible, right? And I don't know if any of you have ever experienced that or if any of my colleagues, um, can comment on that, but 
I think it's very important to have those, that part of it laid out very clearly before the mediation starts. And that's, a, that's also a marketing tool. Great point, Tonya. Thank, thank you for highlighting that. Definitely keep in mind. And also you put in chat as well, uh, mm. the very same comment. Thank you for that. Um, uh, just a time check with you. We have about 10 minutes left. So it's important if there are any other question that you may have that we hear from you and be able to be here for you today. So at your service, mm, available for any question you may have. So feel free to ask us. And if not, I wanna ask our colleagues in the remainder of time, if there's anything they wanna to add to the conversation uh, to please go ahead, Darcy, I'll give you access for share screen. If you wanna share screen with us, you know, you can do that now. I apologize, I thought I had given that access earlier. You are mute, Darcia. You surprised me. Okay, so I was just going to give you an example. One of the things that I did, I don't know if this is being shared. Do you see the brochure? I did these simple brochures years ago and I've revised them several times, but they're, they're easily put in an envelope, one-sided, and it explained my practice, what my focus on, and that's what I would mail out to doctors. And I still do, I have a different brochure now, but I mail them out periodically. And then when I was looking at websites, um, I just wanted to show you this amazing website that I think did such a good job of stating it without words what they were about. And this is, this is something I think is so important today because people don't read the way they used to. We're so used to just grabbing onto words and going on to something else. So you don't want your website to be too verbose. And, um, but this, you know, I just thought this was marvelous for peaceful solutions. What you tell, what you see there that they don't have to tell you, are you seeing this? Am I sharing it? The center? Okay, good. So what they're telling you is what they do. They do transformational mediation. They transform relationships. They build bridges with students and children. And this is to me just one of the best websites I've seen in a long time. And you'll notice it's all video. That's where we're going. If you have static images only on your website, it's not going to promote you today the way you should. So thank you for letting me share that. I mean, I just think that this was just marvelous. Thank you, Ishmael. But for uh, thank you so much, Darcia. Thank you. Yeah. I. Uh, wanted to also again emphasis if there are any questions, this is a time to address a question to us. No, seems like we've done a great job. We've covered everything. We haven't left anything. <laughs> what I was thinking is we need to have like a six week course to bring everybody together. This has been so fun. Um, yes. Uh, Ishmael, um, yeah, kindly. Uh, I think Pauline Wahinya had her hand up, and then after Pauline okay. Wahinya. Yeah, Pauline Wahinya had her hand up. And then after Pauline Wahinya, I will make a kind request. Uh, we have uh, uh, the Angela Munga Mwadumbo, um, uh, Kimutai Cherono, and uh, Pakuto Peter from Uganda, and Christina Gatura. I will make a request to them very specifically because in each session that we are having, we are looking, we are, we are, we are trying to determine what are our key takeaways so that on Friday, we can be able to develop an, our action plan. So I will kindly request, Pauline Wahinya, I think had a question, and then we can invite um, Angela Munga Mwadumbo, who is uh, the convener of the court annexed mediation bar bench committee of the Law Society of Kenya, Nairobi branch. Uh, we'll invite Kimutai Cherono, who is a mediator and advocate, and he's a proprietor of complete Consultants Africa, which is um, a mediation dispute resolution firm. We invite uh, Pakuto Peter, who is a team leader and a mediator at uh, West Nile Mediation Center in Uganda. And he is the, he is the uh, co convener of uh, this uh, African International Mediation Week for this year. And uh, also, we invite Christina Gatura, who is a mediator and a mediation trainer. And she's also the founder of Jesilo Consultancy in Kenya. So, kindly um, for the panel team, we will invite you to just give us a comment in 1.5 minutes what you have received from this discussion that we can take away so that on Friday when we are doing the action plan, we can now be able to factor that. 
So Pauline Wahinya, you had a question? Is it still there or it's covered? Oh yeah, yeah, thank you very much, Wagari. I think it is already covered. Thank you very much, Ismail, Tonya, and Dorcia. Uh, okay. But uh, you, you, you are the one who, you, you touched on the question I wanted to ask Ismail about what policies guide them on mediation in America. Because we were talking, Kim talked about the, the act which is in parliament now, which want to regulate mediation. I wanted to know how, what is the law which is guiding the mediators? Because in most cases, in professional association in Kenya, they guide the way forward. We, don't, we have not come up with an association of mediators in Kenya, which can guide the way to move with the pricing of the, of, of the profession, of the consultancy. That's what I wanted to know whether there is something in law which is guiding. Because uh, if it is doctors, they have the association. If it is um, architects, they have their own association which can guide. And they can be able to take that, uh, the act to parliament and then they know the way it should guide. Wagare yeah. there, even you, you can uh, come up with something on how we will do it on the way forward. Thank you, uh, Israel. Uh uh, thank you, Pauline. With respect to time, I'll be very brief, and my colleagues, if you have anything to add, they can. We have, when it comes to regulation, we are very decentralized in the United States. We don't have a set of regulation, for example, that regulates pricing, um, let alone you know, uh, training. Uh, trainings are done by various agencies, private and public. And of course, associations do exist, such as the Association of Conflict Resolution in the United States and many, many other institutions that are local, regional, and at the national level. But as far as the governing laws goes, when it comes to one authority, to the best of my knowledge, we do not have that in the United States. Just a brief answer to that, but there's a, that's a very short version of it, Pauline. I wanna make sure that uh, what Van Gori had requested, we, we do give time to, so that uh, in 90 seconds, we hear uh, from our distinguished guests on their takeaway. So please okay. go ahead. Lovely. Uh, Angela Munga Mwadumbo, we may start with you, your 90 seconds kindly. Angela, then Kibutai, then Pakuto, and then Christine Gatura. That's okay. Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> my key takeaway is that um, we can position ourselves strategically by offering free information. I think that uh, struck a chord with me being an advocate. We, we really, we don't like hearing the word free services, but um, I think uh, Darcy and the rest of the team have really elaborated that you're not offering free services. You're offering information or positioning yourself such that people would want to seek you out so that they get now those services, then they can pay at that point. That has been my most, um, that is what I have taken very, very strongly. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, mediator uh, Kimutai Cherono, kindly. Hi, um, I've obviously been a bit vocal during the course of the session, but the one takeaway I have is that uh, the comment that therapists hate attorneys because they make things worse. <laughs> so that's going to be my motto for like the rest of the year. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks everybody for doing that. I uh, give my time to the next person. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Uh, we invite uh, Peter Pakuto from Uganda. Am I still? Peter Pakuto, West Nile, Uganda. Oh, thank you so much. Karibu sana. Thank you so much, Wangari. And uh, thank you. Very fine, and thank you very much, uh, Roger, for your elaborate uh, discussion, especially with regarding to pricing. At the West Nile Mediation Center, we have had the challenge of pricing our services, and uh, this was mainly because my background was from the legal aid where I used to work at the Uganda Law Society at the legal aid department. So our services were free, and when I opened up the mediation center, mostly we were providing the free services in mediation to catch the to, to make sure that the service is known. Now, when it came to pricing, it was very, very challenging. Which case do you want to price? Do you want to price, uh, what type of pricing would you want to make? Is it 
a land matter? Is it an accident claim? Is it a personal injury claim? Until when um, I was influenced by one of, uh, uh, by a donor called the Hague Institute for Innovation in Law Hill, that came and said, you know what, Peter, you need to be serious about mediation. Mediation is fetching a lot of money abroad. And if you continue like this, you will not succeed. And so they helped us that we started developing a pricing model for our services. And we are doing well. I do mediations on a daily basis. Yesterday, today, tomorrow will be a mediation session. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, and uh, for your information, uh, Peter Bakuto is the co-host of uh, this uh, African International Mediation Week. Uh, we birthed the African International Mediation Week plus other, uh, 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 other um, interrelationships with the Uganda West Nile Center in uh, 2018, and it has come to life uh, in two years' time. So it's, uh, thank you very much, Sebo. Uh, we invite uh, mediator Christina Gatura. Christina Gatura, for your 90 seconds. Christina. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, thank you uh, to our facilitators uh, for getting very explicit about the Okay. Uh, Christina, we seem to, to be to be losing you or to have lost uh, yeah, to be losing your, your audio. Uh, I'd just like to uh, highlight uh, some keywords that I've seen on the chat uh, that have been typed in as who I'm, um, when, uh, because when we were starting this discussion, there was a, there was a, a, a key uh, message that you can use other words to pass a message or to identify something. And yeah, I've seen the facilitator, problem solver, navigator, coach, professional neutral, neutral advocate, resolutionist, and I think that that, that is probably the takeaway that I take, that on Friday, we need to be clear what we term ourselves as. Because certainly, yes, walking around the streets and saying I am a mediator, I, I normally have to explain to people, oh, so I do, you know, you, uh, so I take them now back. I do what uh, Kofi Annan came to do in Kenya when we, we were, we were uh, not agreeing as a country. And that's really not the best um, context to bring back to people's minds. But I know, yes, they do understand what um, I am communicating in that particular moment. So I wish to uh, say thank you. And as I'm saying thank you, uh, Mediator Diana Oyugi. Mediator Diana Oyugi, good evening. Good evening. Yes, how are you today? And uh, it's, uh, good, it's good to see you today. Thank you, thank you. This is a wonderful, wonderful session. I really, really am so grateful. Thank you, Angari and the entire team for starting with us so well from the 30th. This is so, so informative. And for those of us who are so far, though in Nairobi right now, but was out of the city, yes. Things are so, so, it's too, it's very informative. Very, it's so insightful. This is worth every single moment. And I'm so happy that I made it to this session. And I know that you're going to, as Wangari, you've been great to us. I know you're going to share this out with the rest of us in Wasiliana Hub and the rest of the mediators around. This is the end thing. I'm glad that we've had this session. Thank you so much, all of you wonderful people who presented today. We are so grateful, sincerely. Okay. So uh, Asante Sana, that is our mediator, Diana Uyugi. She's our Women in Mediation Leadership co-chair. And today was our day for Women in Mediation Leadership uh, International Seminars. And uh, just as uh, the good surprise that came is that uh, we received a gift of a great woman today who was uh, Darcy at uh, Tudor as uh, the special guest today. So it just came in as a very good uh, coincidence uh, during our Women in Mediation Leadership Day. I hand back to uh, Ishmael, Tonya, and Roger. We are closing with the American National Anthem. So it's over to you uh, when you're ready to close. And colleagues, thank you for joining us. Tomorrow morning, our first session is at 9 a.m. Kenya time. And we will be having uh, the Financial Industry Dispute Resolution Center from Singapore. 
our discussion is on is Kenya ready for an industry independent financial industry dispute resolution center. So make sure you are on the call tomorrow. Use the same link, sign up for the date that is for tomorrow. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Ishmael, thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much, Vangori. And uh, you know, I personally am not good in singing the national anthem. Uh, <laughs> Whitney Houston you does sing it. As a song. You can sing as a song. Choose. That, but <laughs> I, I have great amount of difficulty. There are two options. One is that I have it copied and pasted on a Word document. Uh, I will ask my colleague to sing it, or we can have Whitney Houston sing it for us in three minutes. Any preference? <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I'll share a screen with you. I see if I can get audio from Whitney Houston here that I have uh, pretty much queued in. I think she's more qualified to sing him for us than, than us doing it. Okay. Let me know if you can get the audio on this. Oh goodness, that's a long version. Okay. Thank you, Ismail, for saving the for saving all the Americans. Thank you. <laughs> Wendy Houston did a better job than all of us yeah. could have done. So I, want to share that Absolutely. One. <laughs> I believe it's a yes. blessed night now. Ismail, you may close us out and uh, thank you so much for the session. God bless you. Thank yes, you, so you need to. You, we need to get our own person to compete with Whitney Houston. That's that'll be your task for the next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is this is the thing. Um, everyone on the call here on Saturday, we have this team coming to speak to us now about the the, the conflict intervention service, which is actually the work they do, and they've done over two thousand mediations. So. Uh, you know, I, my screen right now, I can see Roger Moss, Christine, and I can see Lydia and Timutai together. So I'm sure uh, by the time you combine the, 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 the Kenyans there, you can, yes, come up with something for, for Saturday. So I'm sure on Friday we'll talk about it. <laughs> Thank you, Kimutai. <laughs> okay, Excellent. good night. God bless you. Ishmael, you may close us out kindly. Thank you. Good night, so everyone. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's been Thank a privilege you. to be with you. Thank you so much. We feel Thank like you. we know you for a long time. Uh, yes. Don't miss Saturday. It's about CIS. We, uh, this is our fifth year. We are very excited. This year alone, we have surpassed over 2,000 cases. We'll be glad. I mean, we can talk forever, but um, have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. I know it's late for you for joining us, be with us, and we are grateful for your presence. Thanks again, and we look forward to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Not night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Good night. Bye.